Whoop whoop. So today we're looking at some of my most interesting photos from my portfolio. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to break them down and analyze them and tell you what was my mindset uh, you know, behind them, what are some tips and tricks to achieve the specific effects that I managed to achieve with these uh, photos. So yeah, let's do it. How I shot this, my top wedding photos from last year's. Hello everyone, my name is Magic, I'm a wedding photographer, Sony Europe ambassador, father of four children, and welcome to my YouTube channel, the channel about photography, gear, and weddings. So consider subscribing if you're into any of these uh, topics. So today we're looking at some of my photos from my best of 2019 uh, uh, blog post. You can actually find this on my website, so if you go to magicweddingphotographer.com, uh, the first thing you're gonna see is gonna be best of 2019. And there's a series of photos from the 2019 uh, season that you can just uh, look through. And I choose few photos from this series that I think are quite unique in terms of the way they were shot. But first, <laughs> one of the most interesting things here is, is the actual the number of photos taken with each lens during the whole wedding season for me. So that was the wedding season, including like 20 something weddings, a couple of the engagement shoots and the wedding shoots and so on. So here are all the lenses that I've used uh, during that year. But to make it a little bit simpler, I have a simplified version of this because there was like different 24 mil lenses, different 35 mil lenses, different 50s and 185 and 135. But looking at this in that general matter, we'll see that most more than 50% photos were taken with a 35 mil lens, which if you've been following me along uh, on that YouTube journey, you've already know that 35 and 50 are my top two lenses. So 50, as you can see, is 20%, and that includes 55, 1.8 uh, Zeiss lens and A50, uh, Sumilax Leica lens that I have videos on, and then, 21% photos, so actually a little bit more photos with a 24 mil lens, and that includes 24 G Master and a 24 tilt shift uh, adapted, like a Canon's uh, 24 tilt shift version one adapted. I'm gonna do a separate video on a tilt shift, so stay tuned in if you're interested in that. And then just 5% of the photos is with something longer than at 50, which is 85, and maybe a couple photos here with 135. And the first photo, we're gonna look at is the photo shot with 35 1.8 uh, Sony lens and this is from engagement shot that I shot in New York City so it's fall in New York City beautiful weather a nice evening so it was getting a little bit darker here and I was playing around with like a slower shutter speed and uh, this particular photo was shot at 1 30th of a second and that effect that you can see here with that background going like a little swirly here um, is achieved because I was shooting a series and I was changing the orientation of my camera from vertical to horizontal while shooting. So that is a thing that I often do when I shoot like vertical and then I'm, I'm gonna switch to horizontal. I keep shooting photos because well, first of all, I'm having some moment between my couple in front of me, uh, so I don't wanna miss that. Uh, but then I know that like that movement can create uh, an interesting effect like this here. So the next photo, is from a wedding at Cliffs of Moher. So it's a windy day, it's rainy, and you can see like what is interesting in that picture, in my opinion, like one is the intimate moment, you know, between the couple. But the second thing would be that misty effect that you can see here, you know, that, that lights being um, a little bit softer. And this is due to the lens getting wet. <laughs> So when, when I'm shooting a wedding like this, like I have this bag on me and like always, always I have on me things like that. So a lot of this, you know, fiber 
clothes just to clean my my lenses all the time because you know shooting under the waterfalls shooting at the cliffs you need stuff like this but sometimes I do leave um, the water on the lens just to see how it will look first if it's you know ruining my image I will just wipe it out and but if it's helping my image like in this particular situation I'm gonna leave it and there's one more photo with like the drops of rain on the lens so this is also shot with 35 1.8 so that lens it doesn't flare like crazy like this but that that effect here is actually this photo is backlit and and the the rays of light are coming through that drops of rain on the actual front glass element of my lens so um so that is a cool effect so that's the second tip for today um don't clean your lenses all the time and especially if you're shooting mirrorless because then you can actually see the final effect you know looking through the electronic viewfinder so you will see if your image is benefiting from you know that dirty front element or not but also what you can do uh, you, you might want to achieve this effect on purpose so you might you know spray your lens uh, with some water just before a shoot to see what kind of effect you will get you know all the means that will get you to a cool effect are okay okay and now we are moving to a 50 mil ter territory and the 50 mil is uh, is a lens that I often use for all those ring shots and all of those close shots so I don't use any of the macro lenses but uh, what I will often do is try freelancing have you ever tried freelancing so freelancing is interesting technique that works uh, when you just take your lens off the mount and keep it just like close to the front element and that also creates an interesting macro effect because you can get really close to your subject uh, it gives me an interesting look of the details I'm shooting and then again if you've been following me uh, here for a while you know that I like using 50 mil lens for a vertical portrait what is so special about this uh, this specific portrait is that actually that dirty dress and that moment in that shot uh, because this is the way I market myself to my couples uh, by showing photos like this by showing all these adventurous you know moments between my couples but showing that uh, okay you will get your dress dirty if you're not happy with that you might want to go with some other photographer if you are booking me for, to shoot you know a wedding on a cliffs or on a beach or in Iceland most likely your dress is gonna get uh, really dirty so this photo tells that story and, and that that I think is so special about this photo then I have a photo that you might have seen before on my previous video last week so this is another vertical portrait but this time shot with Sumilax 50 lens so which is a lens that creates an amazing lens flare so I love flares I love shooting you know backlit and especially with mirrorless this, these days that again you in viewfinder you can see the final effect uh, while shooting a photo so you will see the flare and you can position the flare the way you want in the picture and now we're moving to a third of my most used lenses which is a 24 millimeter G Master lens often I will use it in situations like this when it's there's a tight space or I need that wider perspective so that's a great moment I love this photo <laughs> like we have all these girls you know lined up in a V letter uh, which is actually a very a cool composition by the way but then uh, using this during portraits also can give you like unique perspective um, this is a shot from a Canary Islands that I was shooting anniversary session of my friends uh, sitting on, on the back of the car and you know get, getting that really wide perspective probably a 20 mil G would be even more cool uh, here in this shot but I'm um, that the 24 is the widest I have and there's like two more photos from this shoot wait I'm gonna remove myself from this photo for a second so you know that 24 uh, can just give you that unique perspective of more of everything in the background so in this particular case I wanted to you know have this mountains in the background I wanted to have the sun in the background that why that is why the horizon is a little bit tilted in this picture because by you know by tilting it back and and making it straight I would just get rid of that mountain tops which I want to keep in that photo 
And then there's a one more photo from the shoot, you know, that wide perspective, leading lines. So again, if you are shooting wide, make use of, of the surroundings. That is stuff that will get in the frame when you are shooting like a really wide lens, like a 24, maybe 20 mil. Um, so in this case, I was just using that leading line of that dunes and just positioning them right on the left top of the frame and then having that uh, right top also a pretty cool photo with the 24 mil lens and then what I love using 24 millimeter lens most and I have a separate video on it is the dense floor stuff so this shot is actually a double exposure that was shot by firing my flash two times during the one shutter uh, click so that's something you might want to play around with you know trying to fire your flash two times or sometimes shooting with a second shooter you will have a second flash shooting and if you have like a slow shutter speed like maybe one second or two seconds then you will get more than one flash you know in that frame and this is what I was using here i'm actually working on a course of how to you know shoot like this how to master your dance floor shot so this is something that hopefully will be coming later this year and then last but not least uh, that's a photo taken with a 24 tilt shift but what is actually really unique for me in that picture like except the other them having like really awesome moment in between um, each other you can see that the beach in the background is super you know clean and and, and there's yeah you know zero marks of, of you know people walking on that beach in the background so how I achieved this is by telling them to walk backwards so we started I found the spot on the beach that was exactly clean we started this moment and I was like okay face me and go back because all, because I wanted to have that movement I wanted to have that action between them you know holding hands walking jumping you know doing fun stuff but if we would be doing that you know um, going towards me we would be leaving all the marks behind them but here by moving backwards uh, you get all that clean stuff because all the marks that they're doing are in front of them which are out of the frame in this uh, particular case so yeah hope those photos and those tips make some sense for you and maybe will be useful for you shooting some cool stuff with your wedding couples so yeah if you find this um, helpful and entertaining uh, feel free to leave a like if you haven't already please subscribe and i will see you in the next video very very soon so magic is out <laughs>